Well, hi, YouTubers. Hi, I'm back with the Six Months 60 Books, and it is The Witch's Kiss by Elizabeth and Catherine Kaur, okay? Now, I really enjoyed this book, as you can see from the markers. I read the blurb on the back, okay? The reason I got this book is actually I was given the second one. I had to read the first. Here we go. Mary is an average teenager. She's also a witch. She's trying not to be, but she is. Then Jack comes into her life, and she can't help falling under his spell. One problem. He's part of an evil centuries-old curse, and that Mary now has to break. If Mary has lost her heart, will she lose her life too? Or can true love's kiss save the day? Being a witch is dangerous, but being in love is even worse. Okay, first of all, some positives. I like the fact, okay, this has two different authors, okay, the core sisters. However, their narrative voices merge. Sometimes when you read a book by two different authors, you can tell from the way the narrative changes, this flows brilliantly. I praise this book just for the way it flows. Um, I love how it opens. It opens in the Kingdom of South Saxons, 5522 AD. Witches do not kneel. They do not grovel. They do not beg from any creature, mortal or immortal. And most of all, they bargain. Meredith knew this. And then this for a long time, as she could remember. So long, as long as she could remember. But he scrambled up the steep hillside, shedding her skirts and her skin on her long thorns of may trees. The things she'd be certain of were no longer enough. Finally, she reached the summit. This place was not holy, but it was old. Very, very old. Meredith passed through the outer rings of pine trees, so tall and so close, until they booked out the sun. This I pledge. Her voice was weak as she swallowed, ran her tongue over her cracked lips and tried again. This I pledge. By the time the charmed sleep ends... One of my children's children will be ready to face Gwyndon, to defeat him and the evil traces of his enchantment from the face of the earth, or shall I have vengeance? With one finger dipped into the blood, made of a trace the shape in the ground of binding rune. For a moment it glowed against the white dark earth before burning away into smoke. And 1500 years later, her direct descendant, also called Meredith for life, gets very complicated. One thing I did love is, this is, this is now officially chapter one, this is Mary, Meredith, okay, the descendant. Mary was dreaming about blood. Blood was running in scarlet rivets across the black tarmac of her feet, pulling across her toes. So much blood that she could smell it, the coppery, tinny scent of it, like a palm full of coins warm that had been clutched into her fist. She put her hand up to cover her nose and her mouth, trying not to breathe too deeply. Any distance someone was screaming. She looked up. A boy was walking towards her across the flat grey lit landscape. Memory stirred in her mind. She knew this boy had not from her recent nightmares. She recognised his clothes, cloak, pinned with a gold coloured brooch. Jack. Another memory photo to service of her mind. So she knew the boy's name. Straight into it. Okay? So basically, one thing I absolutely love is this turns the... This turns the face, face structure story, if you will, of Sleeping Beauty on its head, as where it kind of gets its, um, and all this from, also a little bit of Rumble Stilson too, okay, with the kidnapping of a child. So, in various films, so basically Gwyndon, who 1500 years earlier was promised to a queen or princess if he brought back the heart of, like, an evil sorcerer, if you will. And then when Gwyndon got back, because he wasn't, he was a peasant, he wouldn't get the hand of the princess, he'd get the hand of the little sister, which meant he'd never become king. He basically ran away and put a curse on the princess's entire family. And when Jack was born, he was taken away for 16 years. Okay? He was taken away for 16 years until his 16th birthday. Actually, luckily, past his 16th birthday, okay? But it didn't work and Jack was cursed. And this happened. And this, this is... This is the bit where Jack was transformed after he was kidnapped. Jack's jaw and tongue started working. Whether it was taste, whether it was, whether it was tasted foul, salty, metallic, but Jack could not stop himself eating and swallowing. Even though he thought at any moment he was going to be sick or pass out, the wizard fed him the whole bowlful. Then he dipped his fingers into the juice at the bottom of the bowl, placing on Jack's forehead. The girl in the village, Winifred, you loved her, did you not? You may answer. Yes, Jack quote. I wanted her to love you. You wanted her heart. Yes. 
Well, now you have it. William held up his hands, they were covered in blood. No, it's not possible. You can't have killed her, and I cannot have just, I just can't. I'm sorry, Jack. The curse always taken hold, flowing through your veins, seep into your bones. Whenever we play King of Helmswick, said you will become my servant and a king of hearts. So basically, Jack sleeps for like a certain amount of time, then comes back and literally devours hearts until Gwen is strong enough to basically like take over the world. Okay, that's what gets a bit confusing again okay? because what is Gwendolyn's goal here? Okay, even I got a little confused by this. That's kind of a problem though, there's too many narratives kind of going on at one time. And also, I'll be truly, truly honest, the flashbacks, the bits where it's Jack's life, okay, the bits where they're talking about like, this bit, okay, where Gwyndon finds Ralph, an ancient wizard, okay. And this bit here, I love this. For five years, Gwyndon studied with Ranoff, a wizard. Each day he gained in knowledge, each day does something that what made him human. King Wilfred, sick and frail as he was, did not long survive Edith's return and she became queen. Edith grieved her father and often wondered what had become of Gwyndon, and yet Aidan filled her heart with joy. Uh, the actual guy got rejected, and the kingdom prospered, and in fullness of time, the young king and queen were blessed with a child, baby prince who one day would become king. I found the flashbacks, which I'm not going to describe, even though I actually did mark them, okay? I found the flashbacks to the kingdom 1,500 years ago a bit more interesting than the present. That would have been brilliant in a way, kind of intersecting Mary's journey with Jack through time to the final crucial moment when I get here didn't actually really meet quite further along in the book face to face and sometimes the problem was it felt like every single character was saying the same thing over and over again you have Mary, you have a mother who's a witch but kind of rejected her training you've got the grandmother wishing to train her Mary has this kind of like weird kind of magic okay, going on okay, or wild magic if you will her brother Leo is dealing with the fact that he is gay and also and absolutely adored Leo and also the fact is this, now Leo, unlike a lot of contemporary novels where one has powers and one doesn't, and there's jealousy going on, this, Leo doesn't really care about magic, Leo wants to be a doctor. Leo just doesn't, he doesn't really care about all this shit, he just keep kind of dragged along into it. Sometimes I think there's too much going on, and he's a bit more structure, okay, a bit more, a bit more concise, a bit more, be a bit more concise, okay. However, Mary, one thing I liked about Mary is, Mary... Mary is a screw-up, okay? Mary used her magic in a really bad way. She hurt a lot of people. Mary is realistic. One thing I, I don't like sometimes about young adult novels is when they don't act like young adults. They act more like adults, adults, than young adults, okay? They, they're too confident. They know what's going on. Mary is a screw-up. She used her magic prior to this book in a bad way. Basically hurt the people around her. She was basically using her magic for her own gain, okay? And this bit, this, this bit here, okay? Mary cuts down at her fingers, her nails still full, but otherwise there was no outward sign of the energy that had surged through her hands. They looked normal just like she did, which was a joke, because she wanted to be normal for so long. Not in the beginning, not when she found out that she was a witch, but after Alex, a uh, previous guy that was hurt because of her. She was desperate to be normal, at least she thought that was what she wanted. It was what she wished for. Well, maybe she was finally getting her wish, maybe her magic was going crazy, because it was draining her leaving her and that was a good thing the best thing that could have happened to her wasn't it yeah so there's too much seriously going on okay but then she meets jack who's basically perfect okay this is jack when he's not being the king of hearts okay when he's actually like under this like having a conversation with mary and like this jack shook his head someone some clever once told me something about magic she said there was more than one kind of magic in this world. There's wild magic, there's tame magic. There's magic of the elements of root and stone and river and wind. There's a magic of light and sound of moon and star, fire or candle. And then there's a the dark magic out of the shadow realm. But apart from that last, magic in itself isn't good or bad. It's only made so by the person who's using it. He moved close to her and there was such warmth and understanding and certainty in his eyes that she had to look away. It was almost as if he knew her, knew what was deep and down inside of her, better than she did herself. You're brave, Mary, and strong, and I know that you will always choose to do the right thing in the end. You don't desire to hurt people. That's the difference between you and Mother like Gwyndon. That's the difference between, I hope, between Gwyndon and me. So basically, Mary's destiny, if you will, is to kill Jack. To free the King of Hearts, she has to kill him. Okay, kill, kill Gwyndon, okay? Okay. Gwyndon, I didn't even really get as a character, because the water development really kind of went to Jack. Okay? We just know, okay, that he... 
had his heart broken 1500 years ago, he's now evil. Uh, he needs a bit more development. However, Mary falls in love with Jack. However, she's not in love with him. I pretty much say Mary is not in love with Jack. She's a, she's a teenager. She is... No, she knew... She's in love with more the concept of love than love itself, okay? She thinks she's in love, she's not, okay? So I like this book. The fact is that even though May thinks she's in love, we know that as a reader that she's not in love. But the thing is, she has to break the curse. So she's pretty much going along with it. She's convinced herself that she loves Jack, but I don't really think she does. It's just my opinion. Problems with this book, okay, is the fact is that the same questions kept going on over and over again. Everyone seems to have a storyline going on. The mama with her not being quite absent because of her job. Even though she's a witch, she's un she's un she refuses to use her powers. Leo coming out the closet and sadly losing his best friend who he was in love with. Stuff going on with Mary at school. They have to go off away with like a binding spell at one point. Too much going on. There's too much going on. This book is 400... 423 pages, and I think it could have lost a good 50 of them without losing the plot. And I really think, wish that Gwendon, who was this big dark evil, would have got more development. But it's like it was given to Jack because he was like in the servitude of a dark wizard. But he didn't know what to do with the dark wizard. But I do recommend this book. I've got a sequel, which I'm going to review as well. And um, yeah, but I do recommend it. It's nice to read something a bit different. And nice to read a natural teenager acting like a teenager, a stupid teenager. So The Witch's Kiss by Catherine Elizabeth Court, do recommend it. Okay, at this point, a sign off. And bye now.